All right, up next, Arizona Wildcats, number one seed in the South. The student athletes here this afternoon, Dalen Terry, Benedict Matherin, and Justin Kyer. No opening statement for the student athletes, so raise your hand and we'll find you. Uh, John Titel from HoopsHD.com. Uh, for any of you, um, we've seen stuff like Kerr sticking the tongue out and Dalen waving to the crowd. Do you guys win a ton of games because you're cocky, or are you cocky because you've won a ton of games? I mean, it's just our personality. Uh, stuff like that just gets us going, you know. Um, it's not, not nothing that we do, like, on purpose. It's just part of the game, you know. And me doing whatever I do and Kerr doing whatever he do, just it's just uh, another edge for our team to keep winning. Question for Dalen, uh, David Kelly, KVOA TV. And, and Dalen, you've all, throughout the entire season, you've been, part of your thing has been about building your brand and whatnot. And we've seen some of the athletes get newer stuff now that they're in the NCAA tournament. Has anything new come along for you? And how does being in the NCAA tournament with this team help in building that brand? I mean, obviously us winning more games improves my brand. So us being still playing, still being one of the teams that's still playing, um, Obviously, it's good for me and good for all of us because I'm not the only one that's building my brand. Obviously, Justin's building his brand, Ben's building his brand. Everybody on our team is building their brand. So, I mean, it's good that we keep playing so our brand can still be on. Justin Spears from the Arizona Daily Star. For all three of you, just the thought of playing in the NCAA tournament, what does it mean to you? And do you have any memories of watching March Madness? But you know we got to stay locked in and focus for you know each of our games. So um, I know a lot of guys are just happy to be here, grateful to be here. Um, I know I am. So you know we're going to continue to embrace this uh, experience, um, but also try to you know do it the right way and, and come out uh, with a win each game. So uh, Nick King from Three TV CBS Five in Phoenix. For any one of you three guys, the the lack of NCAA tournament playing experience. What has Coach Lloyd told you guys to prepare you for this? I mean, pretty much, uh, you know, just uh, just uh, getting ready. You know, watch a lot of film and, um, you know, just uh, stick with what, what, uh, what we usually do, you know, uh, keep the game simple and uh, keeping our fundamentals. Either of you want it. I mean, yeah, piggybacking off what Ben said, keeping it simple, one game at a time, you know. Um, yeah, it's an experience thing, but I mean, we all played basketball games before. We're not going to look at this at anything bigger than that. Um, one basketball game at a time. We just act like we've been here before. Have you guys asked him anything with all of his wealth of experience in the tournament? I think he, uh, he usually, he kind of lets us know, you know, he's been there for what, the past 23 years, something like that. So, um, he's just given us, you know, educating us on that stuff. You know, he's been there, so we trust him. That's all we got to do. We don't really got to ask questions because he's, he's got the formula. So, um, you know, we're just going to continue to, you know, be behind him and listen to him and, and focus on winning games. Uh, Dana O'Neill at The Athletic. If all three of you could answer this, I'd appreciate it. Just how would you describe Coach Lloyd's personality? And I don't mean as, as an X and O, just as a person. Like, what's he like? Overall, nice guy, um, jokester, goofy, but serious when he needs to be. Um, you just never know what you're going to get with Coach. You know, he's always going to be happy and smile, but, man, he got different jokes. He comes out of jokes with every, like every day, so just a funny guy. I mean, pretty much the same. Like DZ said, um, he's a fun guy. You know, he comes to practice with a smile. And, um, you know, he's, look, he's, look, he's looking forward um, to learn as well, you know, since first year as a head coach. And uh, he's all about learning and, um, you know, giving, giving us his knowledge. Yeah, um, as them two said, he's just really he, – he, he likes to crack his jokes. But uh, I would also say he's really competitive. Um, and that's something I've, I've noticed is he, he – you know, every single game, it doesn't matter who we're playing, what level, um, he's really, really competitive. Um, and I think that instills in us too. You know, we see how much he cares and how much he wants to win. It just, you know, makes us want to go out there and, and win for him as well and um, win for this organization. 
Scott Miller, New York Times. Uh, Benedict, question for you. Uh, Coach Lloyd is, uh, uh, has a history from Gonzaga to now of really recruiting and working well with international players. I know you were already at Arizona, but what have you seen? What would you say it is about him that allows him to relate with international players so well? I just say um, his style of play. You know, I've um, you know I watched a lot of games when he was at Gonzaga, and um, just the player, the players he brought uh, through his program, and you know the style of play he's playing. I just felt like it was a great fit for me as well, and uh, the international players on my team. Jason Shear, Wildcat Authority. Um, this question is for all of you. Was there a, a moment or a game where you guys kind of said yourself, "Okay, we're we're a pretty good basketball team here"? I think uh, I think we've always known we were going to be a good team since this summer. You know, we, we kind of bonded and clicked really early. Um, but you just can't go into seasons thinking you're going to be this or that, ranked this or that. And obviously, we weren't ranked at the beginning of the year, but we knew we were good enough to be. Um, and then, you know, those tough road games you go on and you see how your team, you know, adjusts and, and see how close you guys get. Um, we always knew we were going to be pretty special and we believed in it. Um, and we're continuing to do that. Yeah, Steve Rivera, AllSportsTucson.com. Uh, could you talk about just how fun it's been playing in the style of, of offense you guys play in, as well as defense, because you guys get after it? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's fun. I bet it's fun to watch, too. So, I mean, everybody touches the ball. Everybody gets off. Everybody everybody eats. You know, on defense, we all have our accountabilities, and we all do what we have to bring to the table so we can play as fast as we do and make it as fun to watch it. And it's real fun to play, so. Lena Washington, 12 News in Phoenix. I'm just curious if you guys have heard from any alumni, if anybody's reached out. We've heard Steve Kerr and David Blatt reach out to Coach. I'm curious if you guys have had anybody communicate with you guys, how proud they are of you guys. Yeah, they're always pretty supportive of us. And, uh, you know, we we had our alumni weekend back in Arizona um, a few months ago. And then, you know, we got to obviously see a Warriors game on one of the road trips. And um, we know they're always supporting regardless if we hear from them or not. Um, I'm sure some of the guys here, you know, personally and individually. So um, we know they're always supporting. We see them on social media, you know, just commenting on certain posts and stuff like that. Um, it's a great, you know, alumni club. So uh, not just, you know, the big names, but also just a lot of people who've been through the uh, program. Guys, this is for anybody. Bailey O'Carroll with KOLD in Tucson. When you got off the bus and walked into this arena for the first time, you see all the March Madness stuff everywhere. What went through your guys' head? say it's about to be a uh, movie I said you know it's my first time most of my teammates the first time we're playing in March Madness and uh, I just said we're pretty excited you know we're gonna go uh, game, games after games but um, it's, it's, it's an experience like no other so pretty excited. Brent Scrotenborg USA Today question for Ben as somebody who grew up in Canada did you watch the NCAA tournament when you were a kid and how much has the, the popularity of the tournament there grown in your estimation? Um, I used I used to watch March, uh, March Madness a lot, you know, because my sister played she played at NC State, so uh, and she the reason why I started playing basketball. So I I always tune in, uh, you know, women basketball because, uh, you know, she played and uh, just say it was pretty fun and I always wanted to be better than my sister and uh, follow her path. So it's the reason why I started. Any other questions for the student athletes? One over there, sorry. Um, Dalen and Ben, uh, both of you guys, wondering how this feels being here, compare, especially compared to last year, and what was that experience last year? Did you even watch that tournament? How, how are you guys kind of compare the two experiences so far? Uh, we was talking about this the other day. Uh, last year we wasn't, we wasn't even in Tucson anymore while, while this tournament was being played. So, I mean, it's a blessing, and I feel like that was a blessing for us to not even be here last year, for us to have a year like this now. You know, like it makes us that much more hungrier. Um, that we're here now, and we just thank God, thank everybody that was here for us last year, and who stayed the road with us now. So, pretty much the same, like DT said. Um, it was pretty hard watching it, but um, you know, we um, we knew, we knew what we had to do in order for us to get you know into the March Madness. So it was all about uh, motivation, and uh, you know, hopefully playing the March Madness pretty soon. Any other questions? You guys mentioned not being ranked to start the year. At what point did you start to feel like maybe being a hunted team and now being a, a number one seed and a team that a lot of people are picking to win it all? 
um, <clears throat> a lot of those road games, I feel like um, you could just sense their their the opponent's crowd. You know, um, they wouldn't let they let us hear it all. Um, and I think those are the times you realize, okay, um, you don't get big headed or anything like that, but you just know like they're they're there to beat you. You know, the 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 tough Illinois, the tough you know Tennessee, um, and then you know the tough conference uh, road games were. You just realize how, how big of a target was on your back, but you never let it affect you, and we never did. You know, regardless of a win or loss, um, we played our game and we and we played our hardest. So uh, I think that's the that's the time we realized, you know, just you know, we were we were looked at to be beat. Piggybacking up what he said, like this this history of Arizona has always been a rich culture, you know. So I mean, even if we didn't have that number next to our name, we still gonna be hunted, like. Wherever we play, they always want to be Arizona. So we know that every every time we step on the court, it's other team Super Bowl, whether the number one team in the country or the 356 team in the country. So I just want to make that clear. Any other questions for the student athletes? Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Good luck. when asking questions, limit of one follow-up, and uh, make sure you raise your hand, and uh, we'll begin with a, uh, an opening statement from Head Coach Tommy Lloyd. Um, good to see all you guys, um, happy to be in San Diego, uh, excited to play a scrappy, you know, well-coached Wright State team tomorrow. That's about all I got for you. It's hot. It's getting right to it. <laughs> all right, start over there. Hey, uh, Derek Togerson, NBC7 here in San Diego. Uh, what makes this place such a, a good tournament host and uh, just kind of a good sporting event destination city? Well, I mean, San Diego is obviously a world-class city. Um, you know, you, that, that downtown area is awesome now. And, and you know, for us, you know, as Arizona Wildcats, you know, we got a strong alumni base in, in Southern California. So, you know, and, and, you know, I've also heard that there's lots of people that have a house in Tucson and a second house in San Diego, you know, because uh, – it just, it, with, with the weather and when we need a break from the heat, this is the place to go. So, you know, for us, selfishly, it, it, it's a great location. And, you know, honestly, we, we couldn't be much better. Jason Shear, Wildcat Authority. Uh, Tommy, right here. <laughs> um, I was, was there a practice or a game where you kind of just said, okay, this, this team is really good, like it kind of clicked? Um, you know, I honestly, I thought we had a chance early, you know, to be pretty good. But then, you know, you haven't been tested yet. And, and for me... You know, when we that that first we got we got in those first few home games and just feeling the force that we played with, I knew that was pretty unique and it was a lot for these other teams to handle. And uh, then when we got to Las Vegas and found a way to get through those two games and had stretches where we played really well, um, you know, I thought maybe this team has something. And and I, of course, I knew we were gonna have to tighten things up and and you know and, and grow and evolve over the course of the year. Which these guys have done an amazing job. I mean. You know, each of our losses we've had, I think we've really learned from, and we've bounced back and, and played well and become a better team for it. Now, um, you know, uh, you don't want to learn from a loss. So, you know, hopefully, you know, we, we've grown enough to put ourselves in position to be a tough out. 
Tommy David Kelly, KVOA. I, early in the season, and when talking about opposing players, you refer mostly to knowing them by numbers. So number 32, Peter Kiss, what impresses you about what he did in the first round and the first four and then just what you've seen on tape from him well, this season? Well, I mean, he, he's not even on my radar now because he's done. So, you know, I'm focused on Wright State. Uh, so, I mean, he's obviously a, a talented player for Bryant. You talked about, uh, this is Steve Rivera, All Sports Tucson. You talked about just the first practices. How difficult was the buy-in if it was difficult? And did it take some time for them to believe in you? I mean, I, I don't think the buy-in was difficult. Um, you know, obviously, you, you, you have to build personal relationships, too. I mean, and that's part of it. Um, you know, I, mean, I just think back to last spring. You know, we started with, you know, I mean, a lot of concepts. How to, how to pass in a ball screen, how to set a ball screen, how to roll out of a ball screen, you know. And, and I just started kind of building the concepts that are the foundational pieces of the offense. And, uh, and then I think, you know, the buy-in happens when guys feel themselves start to improve. And, uh, you know, none of these guys had much of an opportunity to play make last year. And now, you know, they, they became, you know, I mean, whatever. The, they led the nation in assists, which is a pretty amazing thing when you, when you take a step back and really think about it. And, and so I'm, I'm proud of these guys for how far they've come. And it's been a great group to work with. And, you know, I'm still coaching them hard on a daily basis, and they let me do it. So I'm thankful. Justin Spears from the Arizona Daily Star. Coach, uh, when you look at Wright State, what jumps out to you? Do you see any similarities to the way you guys play? And then also your scouting report on Tim Fink, their forward. On, on scouting report on who? On Tim Fink, number 24. Oh, Tim 24, OK. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I would say the similarities are, you know, they don't mind getting up and down the court. And, and, you know, they play with great fundamentals. And, you know, they read and react to a lot of things in the game. Um, you know, 24, uh, Tim Fink, you know, you know, he has a really close relationship with one of our guys on our staff, TJ Benson, because he started out at Grand Canyon. Uh, and, um, and, and TJ recruited him. So I think there's a, a, a you know, he's a, a tough, hard-nosed player, plays with great effort. You know, he can play the three or the four. He can make threes, you know, which makes him a tough matchup. But, but I think more than anything, I mean, you know, he's the guy that did a great job defensively on Kiss yesterday in that game. And, uh, you, know, you know, Kiss had, to, you know, I think 28 shots to get 25 points or vice versa, something like that. So it was pretty impressive. So I'm sure he'll be on one of our better perimeter players tomorrow. Uh, Chase Isidoro from KUSI Sports here in San Diego. Coach, you have a lot of European uh, players on your roster this year. What kind of advantages do they offer you with their overseas experience? Well, um, you know, I, I love international players, and it's, it, it'll probably, hopefully, always be a foundational piece of any program I'm involved with. Um, I, I think, you know, they have a certain basketball IQ and unselfishness that they naturally play with. You know, and, then I, and I think when you put a group of them together and then you mix in some American kids, it becomes easy. Um, you know, and, and one of the things about European kids coming over at a young age, they're, they're much more adept to being a role player and, 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 and doing those role player types of things because, you know, if you're 16, 17, 18, 19 in Europe, you know, you're, you're playing with men usually, you know, and, and then those men don't let you just dribble the ball around and jack crazy shots. I mean, they make you set screens, they make you block out, they make you do all the little things. So those kids come over maybe with this a little better natural understanding of how to how to contribute to a team without scoring. This side for the next two. Uh, Dana O'Neill at The Athletic. Tommy, you've, you've had some time to live with sort of being a head coach, of course, and I think from the outside people would say, oh, it's gone pretty easily for you. But what has surprised you kind of about moving into this chair and, and been the most challenging? Um, I, I think for me, I mean, I always tell people it's an easy answer. I love coaching and teaching. So so that 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 has been fine. And, and everything basketball-wise that, you know, I've done, basically, I've been a part of doing before. So I had a real comfort level in, 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 and a conviction in, in what I wanted to do. Um, the biggest thing for me has just been the, just the amount, amount of day-to-day -day energy. You know, needs. When, when you're an assistant, I mean, it's a great job and you work really hard, but you, know, you have built-in you know, recruiting days, which, you know, which aren't easy, but they're also, you, you get to take a breath away from the group, little mini vacations here and there. Um, you, know, you have every third scout, so you, know, you might scout really hard one day, and then the next day you don't have anything, so you, you kind of take a back seat in practice. You know, as a head coach, you know, I got to be involved in all that stuff on a daily basis and all the game planning, and, uh, and, and you, don't, you don't get those natural time where you can just come up for air. So for me, that's been the biggest challenge, has just been the day-to-day the -day energy it requires. Uh, Scott Miller from the New York Times. Uh, Tommy, with, given your history with international players, 
when you took this job and some of the international players Arizona already had, did it seem like even more of a natural fit than it might have otherwise? And if I could ask a follow-up. Yeah, I mean, I, I think for sure. I mean, I was familiar with, with all the guys. You know, I mean, being out in the, the recruiting circles and, you know, and guys that I'd, I had looked at previously. And, and I, I think it really helped me, you know, retain a bunch of them. I think that's the one thing people don't talk about in college basketball today, especially last year, was the first year that, you know, you get a job, everybody's a free agent. Everybody can transfer and play right away. There's no waiver needed. So, you know, you had to really go in and re-recruit. I, I think it really helped me because those guys had a familiarity with me and my reputation, and, and I was familiar with them. So we were kind of able to jumpstart our relationships. And, and following up on that, the what is a key, if, the, if you had to pick one or two things in terms of connecting with the international players at, when you recruit them? I think the biggest thing is just letting them know that you know, you're going to be able to help guide them through this process. You know how difficult it's going to be. You know, you know where the pitfalls are, you know, and, uh, and, and, and you're going to be able to support them, you know, when, when they hit some adversity because they're going to hit adversity away from home. And, you know, that's something that, you know, me and my staff are really comfortable with. Me and my wife are really comfortable with, you know, it, to be honest with you, is, uh, you know, dealing with guys from all over the world and, and, and kind of embracing it. Going to go here for the next two and then over there for the next two. John Titel from HoopsHD.com. When you face an opponent with a great scorer like Tanner Holden, who had 37 against Bryant, is your defensive philosophy to let anyone else but that guy beat you or to try to beat you or that he can score as much as he wants because he's only one guy? Well, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll play normal to start. You know, I mean, uh, you know, they have other good players. You know, I, I always tell you guys, I'm, 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 I mean, I know Holden's number two. Um, and then I know they got uh, number zero, the big guy, you know, Basile or something. And then number one, I can't remember his name, but I know he's really good. So they have other good players too. And so, you know, you, you in, in, in a single elimination game, I think you want to come and play solid and straight up and, and, and do your best to guard everybody well. And then as the game plays out, maybe you'll have to make an adjustment and tilt your defense more to one guy or another. But, but, but Holden's a heck of a player. I mean, he's a – He's a natural scorer, and, and he scores a lot of points, scoring twos and ones, which is really impressive. Uh, Nick, Nick King from 3TV, CBS 5 in Phoenix. Tom, you've obviously been a part of a bunch of deep tournament runs with a group that's largely new to this scene. What do you tell them about what is required to do that? We don't have to do anything different than we've done this year, uh, whether you know, it was in the, the tournament in Las Vegas you know, around Thanksgiving or the Pac-12 tournament. You go in and you treat it exactly the same. And, 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 you know, we've learned from each one of those, you know, games. And, and, and our guys have been great in the moment. So I, I don't anticipate anything different. And I don't think we have to do anything different. Uh, you know, and, and maybe that's the key, just to go out. And, I, hey, I, I tell them every day, go out, most aggressive team wins, and let it rip. Greg Hansen, Arizona Daily Star. Tell me, how do you see yourself evolving as a head coach the next five to ten years? Wow, now we're getting deep. Um, you know, I would just say this. You know, I take pride in the fact that I think I've always grown as a coach. Um, you know, and, and, and somebody asked me once, you know, if I had any uh, regrets in my career. I mean, the only regret that I can think of is I, I wish I knew now. I, I wish, you know, back then I know what I know now, back in the past, so I could help those former players more. I just think, you know, I've had so many guys over the year, and I'm like, man, I, I'm getting better at coaching this now. I wish I could have taught it to this guy, you know, seven, eight years ago. It could have really helped him. I mean, that's the biggest thing for me. And so I'm always going to challenge myself to, to continue to grow as a coach. And, um, you know, I, I think I'll hopefully always be comfortable in my own skin. And, and I'm going to go, you know, coach, coach from the heart, use my head, trust my instincts, um, and, and uh, you know, I'm excited. I mean, like you, I want to see where the next five to ten years lead because I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Oh, Bruce Pasco with the Daily Star also. Tommy, did, with the guys, the sophomores, CeeLo, et cetera, that were, were around last year, do you talk to them about, you know, the difference in having to sit out last year and, and this experience, uh, or do you sense that it's anything that's making a difference with them? I mean, the only thing I told our guys is yesterday we practiced at a, you know, a, a, in an old high school gym and it was loud and the backboards were dirty and I said guys like 
I mean, a lot of us started in gyms like this or, you know, uh, you know, Christian and Umar started up playing outdoors. So, you know, what would that kid back then tell the, the man you are now? He would tell him to go for it and, 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 and understand how far you've come and be excited about it and don't hold back and go out and, and, and be excited for this moment and attack it. And this is not really a follow-up, but of but the obligatory, how is Kerr doing? And are you tempted at all, regardless, uh, being as you got past Colorado and UCLA without him, to just let him rest for a couple more days? Yeah, I'm going to give you guys the standard. It's going to be a game-time decision, and, 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 and but I'm 100% coming from the heart. It's true. Uh, we'll see. I mean, he's made great progress. You know, I mean, um, I'm sure he'll be bouncing around out there a little bit today. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to – I mean, our, our goal was to push it, to see how close we could get him to playing. And, uh, and, I, and I think he's close. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll see tomorrow what it looks like. And, you know, it could be a deal where, you know, he, he may play, but he may not start, you know, and, um, and, and, and we'll just kind of take it from there and, and see where he's at. Final question. Tommy, Joe, Reedy, AP. During your years at Gonzaga, did you ever have a team this young in tournament experience? And is there a benefit in that that they basically don't know any better or don't have any tournament history to – live off of or down? I mean, I mean, I can't think of a team this young, you know, that we had. And, um, yeah, maybe there is a benefit. I know, you know, Steve Kerr and I were having a conversation a while back, and he was just telling me how cool it is to go through it the first time. And, you know, for him, you know, when they made that run to the NBA Finals his first year, and he just told me, you know, there's a beautiful innocence about it because you haven't been institutionalized yet. So uh, maybe, maybe that goes for me and the team, you know, where we're, you know, we're, we're, we've got a kind of a, Ignorance is bliss type of approach, and we're going to go out and we're going to be in attack mode because that's the way we played all year. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you, guys. It's the dry heat up here. Huh? It's the dry heat up here. That's, isn't that what they say about Tucson? The dry heat. Right. This, right. Is, this is what you do. <laughs> A recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you for joining us.